Here's something new from Toyota. Their very first electric SUV crossover for 2023. This is your Toyota BZ4X. In this video, we're gonna walk around the outside and find out what's interesting on the new BZ4X from Toyota. Electrics are really interesting to me. They do a lot of great things with the styling that you just can't do with a gasoline engine. And that begins up front on the BZ4X. Check out the front end on this. Really big and bold. And notice, not much of a grill, just this little bit down here. And there's a fan behind there that's blowing air back into the engine to keep the electric uh, motor and the batteries cool. But normally you'd see a big grill up in this area and you just don't see that on the BZ4X. There is this gloss black panel and this is the XLE, or I'm sorry, this is the limited trim. So there's a camera right there and that helps with your dynamic radar cruise control and also your 360 view for the camera. Now this is an electric, so they went back to the chrome Toyota badge on here. It's not blue like you would see on a hybrid. It is uh, silver, kind of a satin silver. I love the hood lines on this, really big bold fenders and sharp lines. And then this has the two-tone colored paint, so this is a gloss black upper here and then it comes down into the gray, the dark gray, charcoal gray, metallic paint finish. And then down on the lower grill, there is kind of a silver satin finish here. And there's also parking sensors here as, as well. And then take a look at those headlights. Really an interesting headlight uh, setup. Super sleek, LED turn signals, LED daytime running lights. And then there's four different lenses in here for your LED headlights. So we have uh, daytime running lights, automatic high beams, automatic on and off, and those LED light bulbs are really bright white and crystal clear. As we go down the bumper, another uh, parking sensor here, and then these vents actually flow all the way through to allow air to travel back across the vehicle, and that air is designed to cool the brakes as well. Now this has the two-tone paint, combination so this is kind of a dark metallic charcoal gray over fenders here which I think give it an interesting look it's certainly not a look that everybody's going to appreciate I'm on the fence with it myself let me know in the comments if you think that's a paint combination you would go for you can get it in a mono color if that's your preference take a look at the wheels and the tires so these are on the limited edition, this is a 20 inch cast aluminum wheel with kind of a black painted insert and then the satin silver metallic as well. And then as I mentioned, these are a 20 inch wheel and tire. We've got four wheel disc anti-lock brakes. Uh, they're ventilated disc brakes. So a super good uh, braking system, keep them nice and cool. Take a look at the body lines on the BZ4X. There are body lines going everywhere on here. So there's this body line going here and then another one up and under the rear view mirror and up and over the fender and then your outside mirrors are painted uh, gloss black there's two things under here there's a camera for 360 view and then there's also puddle lights under there as well so a lot of technology built right into the mirrors these mirrors do fold in although they're not power retracting mirrors like you might find on a CHR or on a Venza but they do fold in for tight parking spaces. Chrome trim up and over your window sills and privacy glass on all your back windows. Gloss black B pillars. The roof rail system is gloss black. And then the panoramic moonroof. This is a fixed panoramic moonroof. Let me see if I can show you inside. So it's all glass on the inside and a fixed position. So really designed to let the sun shine in. Color to match shark fin antenna colored to match outside door handles and then the extra wide body side molding or rocker panels that go right over the tops of the doors there makes it easy to replace those if you pick up any dents or dings those types of things limited does come with the smart keyless entry system so all you need to do is keep your keys in your pocket and grab the door handle and away it goes so coming around to the back 
a very similar styling across the back of here in terms of the tail lights reminds me a lot of the Toyota Sienna now these are all LED lights on here a lot of gloss black trim built into the bezels and around here as well those LED lights are really crisp bright we've got LED backup lights privacy glass on the back windows uh, rear window defrost no wiper washer on here and then this is a split spoiler here so this is going to be an extra charge let me see i think it's two that uh, split spoiler is two hundred dollars so see how it's kind of cut out in the middle allows the air to flow a little bit different across the back integrated spoiler here and then this right here is your led third brake light all the way across the back bz4x badge toyota limited and all-wheel drive all in chrome and then there are some backup sensors these are just reflectors here on the bumper notice uh, and a lot of people don't notice this right away but on an electric of course you have no exhaust pipes so no mufflers sticking out the back really clean look across the back we do have a fully independent rear suspension let's see if we can see up under there at all they hide most of the undercarriage nowadays with uh, plastic shrouding so it does make it really difficult uh, to see anything unless I put it up on the lift, which hopefully I'll be able to get a chance to do that with one of these uh, BC4Xs one of these days. So let's uh, go ahead and just swing around to the front. And I'll pop the hood and we'll talk about the power plant on here, which of course is uh, electric motors. And this is the all-wheel drive edition. So let's pop that hood. So all new for 2023, this is an all electric setup on the BZ4X. So what do we have here? Well, it's powered by two 80 kilowatt electric motors and it produces 214 net horsepower out of those. Primarily it's gonna run on front wheel drive. There are, there's another motor in the back for the rear wheels. Uh, that only kicks in if it senses slippage. So you're not going to be using up energy powering the rear wheels on a beautiful day like today where the roads are dry. But if you need that extra traction, it will kick in. The range is around 220 to maybe as much as 230 miles between charges. Depends on how you're operating it. If you're running the air conditioning and you got your seat uh, ventilated seats on and you're running electron a lot of electrics on the inside, you're going to minimize how far you can go. So you really, it's a kind of a little bit of a learning curve on that. Now it does have the uh, standard battery here and that is a more of a, a backup or something to help get the vehicle going and started so it doesn't actually run the vehicle. The uh, vehicle itself has the capability of charging right here on behind the charging door. And there's, it's a level one charger, which is 120 volt, a level two, 240 volts. Or you can also use the quick charge on here as well. Although right now Toyota is recommending that you don't charge it more than twice a day. So you're going to have somewhere around 400 miles of drivability in a single day. So this is not a jump in it and drive it to California setup. But I have had a chance to drive it around here at the dealership and it is very quick. And I have to say it's fun to drive. So the warranty is going to be an 8 year 100,000 miles on the mechanical system of the electronics um, and then we're going to have a uh, 10 year 150,000 mile uh, war warranty on the battery battery it's a lithium ion battery in here so this is Toyota's first Fourier here in the electrics and uh, they're really trying to get to where they need to be they think they need to be able to get it to somewhere around 300 maybe 350 miles on a single charge but starting out we're here with the bz4x running around 200 to 225 miles between charges all right let's uh, jump in here on the driver's side we'll take a quick look at the driver's door first look really first one we've had so first look i get so the bz4x has a lot of interesting sharp lines on the exterior these body lines and they carry it right on into the inside you can see up here on the upper door panel real sharp lines a lot of gloss black trim up in this area here power windows all the way around power door locks power mirrors there's uh bottle holders down here room room enough for two bottle holders 
and then speakers built into the door but you can see how this door kind of swoops up and around similar to what we saw on the body lines on the outside so trying to tie that all together as far as your seats go the uh, limited edition has a power driver seat with power lumbar support the uh, passenger seat is manual on this one soft tech fabric seats these are ventilated and heated seats very very comfortable seats i like the lighter contrast stitching here height adjustable headrest height adjustable seat belts your airbags are built right here into the seat so as you move the seat ahead the airbags in the best optimal position for safety now the dashboard is one of the most interesting ones i've seen on a toyota yet we'll take a closer look at the whole thing when we get inside but i wanted to show you here this is actually cloth fabric all the way across all the way over to the passenger side so the camera probably doesn't do it justice but it's really nice and luxurious there's uh, vents here down here is the automatic high beams on and off there's a push button for your tailgate release tilt and telescoping steering wheel come down here's our hood release dead pedal uh, brake and accelerator i'm not going to call it the gas pedal anymore it is the accelerator check it out there's even cloth down here on the bottom of the steering wheel so interesting how much attention they're paying to this to this uh, interior before i get all the way in i did want to show you this center uh, console it's, it's a little bit like the prius and also like the sienna where it comes over the top but then you have storage down under here the older style prius that had that in there and then behind here there's usb charging ports there's a 120 volt port and there's a little place right here that you can drop i don't know books magazines papers what have you so that's really a different way of going about it i like that i have a corolla i used to have a prius and i really like that my corolla doesn't i hope they add that on the new corolla let's grab a seat behind the wheel of the bz there is a, a lot of leg room up here. The front driver's compartment is really spacious. Plenty of headroom, even though we have a panoramic moonroof. I think plenty of headroom. I've got the uh, driver's seat all the way back, and I could not drive this vehicle without moving it ahead quite a bit. So let's do that. So if you're a six footer, you should be just fine. Take a look at our steering wheel. This is one of the smallest, most compact steering wheels I think I've seen in a Toyota yet. I've basically got my camera up against my nose so I can take it all in. Uh, on this side are controls for the cruise control, dynamic uh, lane tracing control. We do have full speed dynamic radar cruise control. Uh, and then you can also operate your sound system here, your volume and the modes for your sound system. Of course, there's a driver's side airbag. Bluetooth connectivity for your smartphone, fingertip controls for the information center, which is gonna be up here. We'll get to that in just a minute. And then controls down here for your voice activation for your smartphone. Really a compact, small steering uh, setup. Headlight controls over here. We do have auto on and off for the headlights as well as those auto high beams. And then over on this side, front washer wiper. There's no rear washer wipers on these uh, BZs. The steering wheel and the tilt is interesting because, number one, it doesn't go up super high. And when it does, it kind of obstructs the view of the gauge cluster. You really have to have it more of a down position like this. So that might be a little odd if, you're, if you have long legs and your knees are up and you need to put this up higher. It does tilt and telescope. You can see it kind of raises up as it does that. So that's really an interesting setup. I haven't decided whether I like it or not. Stop by the dealership, take a look, and you can decide for yourself. Now, as far as the gauge cluster, it's all the way up here. It's this little screen right here. And it really extends out into the sunlight quite a bit. That's why I've got this paper up here to try to block out the sun so you can see it. But I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. And it does have push button start. So foot on the brake, push in the button, and there you go. So when, you when it initially starts, there's really nothing going on other than things turning on. And uh, let's see what I've got going here. I'm going to set up the air conditioner a little bit so it doesn't come on too harsh. Hopefully you can see the cluster. might be a little bit different, difficult, but it's kind of a uh, little bit of a computer screen with a digital speedometer. So everything's right in this area right here. And then you can go through and take a look at your fuel economy 
your uh, safety sense, adaptive cruise control, your sound system. I don't know until I take a look at this video if you can even see anything that I'm pointing out up here, but that's where it, it's all at. So it's kind of way up, very interesting, similar to what the Prius was when it first came out, just different. The Prius, of course, came out, it was in the middle, and this is like way up here, so different. This one does have the JBL audio system, which has some additional speakers up here. So there's nine speakers and a subwoofer uh, for the JBL system. Just gonna go ahead and turn some things off here. Take a look at our center stack and all the technology that goes on here. So it's a full touch screen here. I'm just gonna cancel out. Yeah, so I can show you the sound system but there's not much that I can show you until it's set up for the original owner. And as I said, this one's sold, so I really don't want to monkey around with it and mess it up for them. But I will tell you it has Apple CarPlay, which is wireless, Android Auto, it's Alexa compatible. You do have Sears satellite radio, so that's a good setup for there as well. Of course, the JBL audio system. And then down here, this is all touchscreen as well for your heating and air conditioning. So we've got a heated steering wheel, we've got heated seats here. Um, automatic temperature control down here for front driver and front passenger some additional vents going through this area here and then Toyota's using a lot of gloss black all the way through here so it does show the fingerprints it does look nice and rich but it, it also shows those fingerprints now as far as the controls that we're looking at down here we've got our parking brake our parking brake accelerator uh, brake hold eco mode 360 view so this is the limited so it's got a 360 perimeter scan hopefully you can see that in the video but it's basically going around the car give you a sense of what's out there and then when it's done there it'll actually reset and come back to an overhead view like so it's pretty nice too when you go ahead and shift it into reverse it gives you the overhead review reverse view and the path projection on there as well. So that's really nice and clear, easy to see. And there's a bunch of different, every time you tap it, it gives you kind of a different perspective of what's going on around you. As we slide back down here, we've got our parking brake. This is actually our shifter. Now it's a one speed transmission. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and push it down and go into neutral. So you push down let me see if I can show you this. You push down and turn left to go into reverse. You push down and go right to come back to neutral or drive. So if I push, it goes to neutral and then drive like that. So it's just down for reverse, push for neutral, down for drive. And it keeps flipping back and forth. Pretty easy to use, just something to get used to. As I said, eco view, normal. Here's our X mode and then our traction control on and off is right there as well. I thought this was interesting. So here's your a little bit of a storage co compartment. When you open this up, it has kind of a, it's vented on the back side, but then underneath is your wireless charging for your smartphone. So it all tucks down underneath there. And then there's a USB, a standard USB charger there as well. So if you want to put your phone in there and close it up, you're good to go. And it does wirelessly connect. So you don't necessarily have to have access to it full time. Just drop it in there where you go. As far as cup holders up front, there's two down here. You have the bottle holders in the doors. I pointed those out before. And then our center armrest is right here. And it's a nice padded armrest. It does slide forward to cover up those cup holders. And then you can bring it back and it also opens. And then underneath here, a little bit of a storage tray. There's no plugs underneath here. This comes out and that's where your owner's booklets are stowed underneath there there's no glove box on this uh, which I think is interesting that they have no glove box but if you look over here on the on the dashboard there's this does not open there's a driver's airbag and stuff can fall down into that area there but there's no glove box door panel bottle holders all the same as the driver's side same seats again that's not a power seat on that side there's a passenger assist grip the Limited does have the pano moonroof, which is fixed. So it doesn't open, it just lets the sunshine in all the way back to your passenger compartment. 
Take a look up here. We've got lighted vanity mirrors on both sides. Visors have extensions on both sides. Overhead, this is the same overhead console that's in the new Corolla. So LED lights here, panel uh, controls here, and then the safety connect if you need roadside assistance is right here. And the Limited does have the automatic day-night rear view mirror with the home link, the three uh, controls there for home link for your garage door opener. So that pretty much covers the up front. Really an interesting style. Lots of sharp, sharp angles. Probably the biggest impact is this speedometer cluster. And I like this part here, it looks awesome. Let's uh, go ahead and jump in that back seat. Here's a quick look up front from the back seat. You can see how much room there is. It is uh, very spacious inside this vehicle. And I love that panoramic moonroof. It really lets the light come in all the way into the back seat here. Down below here, we've got USB-C plugs, heated seat controls back here. Make sure those are turned off when nobody's back here. You should be able to turn them off from up front. That way you'll get more battery life out of your uh, electric battery. Heaters are down here, and this is a forced air heating system. Pockets on the backs of both seats, which is unusual. Toyota start to get rid of them on that side. Let's see, what else is back here? We've got passenger assist grip, we've got coat hooks, LED reading lights, back seats have adjustable headrests. There's a uh, folding armrest with two cup holders and a little smartphone compartment there. You can bring this up and you have three seat belts back here. There's bottle holders and speakers down in the doors. Same gloss black trim we saw on the front drawer, a little bit of chrome there as well. And then these seats do fold down like so allow you to go into the trunk and there are child safety anchors back here as well the leg room is terrific back here there's almost no there's just a little bit of a hump there so as far as leg room it's super comfortable in the back seat of the bz let's uh, pop the trunk and take a look back there so the uh, tailgate on the back of the bz has a kick sensor here on the limited edition just kick your foot underneath there real quick and it will open it up. Of course, you can use your keyless remote to do that as well. Notice how high that goes up. So the great thing about these uh, tailgates is they're programmable. So you can program it. So if you have a lower garage ceiling, it doesn't have to go up that high. It's up to you. Change it to what you want it to be. Does have a nice wide opening, largely unobstructed, kind of a low lift over as well. The limited edition does have the cargo cover, retractable, and that you can remove without tools. Just grab it like that, pull it, and away it goes. It's designed to stow down underneath the cargo or the uh, floor liner there, but I'm just going to set it on the ground here. And then the floor itself is pretty darn flat. You can see it's nice and wide. It's got a nice wide opening, and also room if you need to stow your golf clubs left to right you can do that now this one does have the JBL audio system so this is going to be your subwoofer right here in the back there's little hooks on the side for tie down hooks and also cargo cargo nuts across the back the uh, floor does come up pops up like so and uh, there's your charging cables down underneath and as far as the spare tire no spare tire on this one it has a flix fix a flat system and all the the uh, pieces to that are over there as well as down underneath way underneath here there's your uh, your tool kit so everything's really stowed out of sight out of mind and then this has that cargo cover that we see on the RAV4 which is pretty nice it basically slides out and you can flip it around do it with one hand here you can flip it around and then it goes back in and you can put it down a little bit lower and so this is really nice if you're hauling something dirty maybe soft water salt potting soil that type of thing and it gives you an extra two to three inches of clearance in the back so it's reversible just flip it around and then you can throw it back up put it back in there it's better to do if you have two hands but you definitely don't need tools you just need two Two hands which of course I don't have because I'm holding a camera 
So 60-40 fold down seats. It's easiest to fold the seats down if you come up through the back passenger doors like this. They drop right down and then take a look at how much room there is for extra storage in this area as well. Same thing over on the uh, passenger seat. Come around here. There's a release handle here. You can release it, drop it down and still a lot of uh, storage there for extra cargo. And then when I come back here, take a look at how much room there is. Definitely could fit a single air mattress back there for an overnight camp out or something like that. And then to close it up, kick your foot under. Oh, didn't like that. Let's give it a try. There it goes, and down it comes. Super convenient. Love that kick feature.